Hey everyone, this is me Rachit. I know that coronavirus has taken this world into a shock. It has been spreading massively. It started from China, but it is also spreading a lot and India is also on the path to explosion. I hope it does not happen with us and India government is trying its best. And I request all of you who are watching this video to really take work from homes seriously try to work from home and be useful to your business and at the same time i request you to maintain social distance with this in mind today's topic of the video is building a bot that scans the official website of our government which is ministry of family health and welfare and once it scans the data from it it will analyze it and then throw us notifications on slack and this is built in python so let's start with it Alright, so this is the official website of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and this is how it looks like. They have um, a table in which all the states which have been infected with coronavirus are there and the details of foreign nationalities, um, Indian nationalities, how many have been cured, how many deaths have occurred is all there. So we have this table and um, what we are going to do is basically taking this as the source of input on our laptops we will be using Python to basically scan this or scrape out the data from this web page, this table. It will scan that and it will store that into the database. Um, I'm just using a simple file, JSON file for that right now because it's not that fancy. But what I mean to say is that um, we will scan this website periodically and once we analyze this table, if from the database we can see if something has changed, we will basically send a notification to Slack which will basically notify us on our apps or laptops depending on where you have installed it. And this is the whole idea about this application that we will build today. And um, the primary responsibility of it would be to check every five minutes or every two minutes depending on how frequent you want these notifications. And um, they should only send us notification if data has changed. And if something has changed, it should also notify us with a summary of that. Now, this is something which I really enjoyed building. And um, if you look at the source code, you can actually learn a lot of quite different things over here. Like for example, um, I'll first show you how the final Slack message or Slack notification looks like. So this is how it looks like. It says, please find coronavirus summary for India below. And it has a few pointers about what has changed from the last notification that we have received. So we can see, that we have a new state, Satisgarh, which is also entering coronavirus. And these 1000 are nothing but how many Indian nationalities, foreign nationalities, how many have been cured, and how many deaths have occurred. So in this case, we can see Satisgarh has also received one Indian who has developed positive for coronavirus. And other than that, we can see Maharashtra is like growing huge from 42 to 44. And I have received so many notifications for Maharashtra. And it looks like for Uttar Pradesh, um, they are really healing or curing a lot of people. So from 16, um, it has increased to 18, but they have also cured people from five to nine. So four people have been cured. So yeah, that's how it is. And of course, uh, we can see that the total number of confirmed cases in India has increased from 142 to 148 for Indian nationalities. For foreign nationalities, it stays constant at 25, which makes the total now at 173 at the point when I'm recording this video. So this is how it looks like. And then we also have a nice looking table, which has all the information per state. And this is how it looks like. Now, the interesting thing which I realized while building is, this is that you can easily write the code for this in five minutes. But at the same time, you can actually take more time to write it professionally. Okay. And we will cover that for example. Now, here are the things. It might happen that your script, once it's working, it might stop working after a few weeks. Maybe the government of India changes the format of the table. Like you have, you're scraping data out from the website and what if your script uh, fails to parse the data? What if your script fails some elsewhere, it has a bug or something. So how do you handle that? Like, do you stop receiving notifications? And then once it's a week or so and you are watching some TV and you realize, oh my God, there are so many more cases of coronavirus in India and I have not received notifications from my app that I have built. So do you wait for that stage to happen or if your script is failing, you are also aware of that. So do you handle all those cases? For example, in my case, um, I did spend a lot of time writing this because now what happened is that there was a bug 
in this application and I did receive exception for that. So as you can see, uh, I had written the code in such a fashion that I also get notification on Slack if my script is failing in case the government changes the format of its table or if there is some error or my script fails for some reason whatsoever. I do receive notifications for that. In this case, you can see um, I was working and I, I didn't check my Slack for a long time, but yeah, you can see I received so many exceptions and then I also have proper logs enabled for this. So I opened my log file and I could see that, okay, there is a key error for Chhattisgarh and I could see that, okay, I have not handled the case wherein a new state has entered into the table, which is not there in my database initially because now the government of India has uploaded Chhattisgarh as a new state, which is having more coronavirus cases. So to handle that, again, I got the notification. I changed the code. I ensured this is covered. And while I was doing that, I also added the summary information, which talks about what has changed from the last point when you received the notification. So in this case, you can see now this is how it looks like after I made the change. And yeah, this is the final piece that I have shown you. So this is um, what I wanted to talk about today. And of course, you can find the complete source code on GitHub. Um, the repo is over here. And um, the main file is coronabot.py. And if you, you can check out the readme for all the features and um, its installation steps as well. Like you, of course you need Python, you need a Slack account, a Slack webhook, and you have de dependencies like these. Beautiful soup is for parsing or scraping and tabulate is for formatting the table into nice fashion so Slack understands it. So you can clone this repository and you make sure to enter your default, uh, I mean, Slack webhook into the auth.py file. And you have to set up a cron tab because um, what is happening is that the script runs, takes out the data from government of website, checks from the database if anything has changed and it basically decides if something has changed, it sends you the notification. So um, to run this periodically, you need something which is known as cron tab. Um, if you are competitor programmers and not software developers, you need to understand how these things are. And I think it's a good exercise building this application or looking at this source code would allow you to learn a lot of things. If you are a pro software engineer, I'm sorry, uh, it is not very fancy, but the idea of this whole app was to allow the people who are in college or who are college students and are about to graduate or are young software engineers, how to write a code properly like in a proper structured way where it's working, it's doing the its purpose. It's basically solving its purpose as well as it's a robust code in the sense like if it's failing, you're getting real time notifications for it. It's a very small example, but I thought that it's a good idea and that's why I am sharing this video with you. So um, with this in mind, um, I will walk you through the source code. Like I'll give you a rough idea so that you can understand the code on your own. Um, so the main uh, Python file is corona underscore bot dot py and in the main uh, statement what we are doing is basically we are passing the argument. So when you're running the script, if you could see previously um, in the cron tab we were passing dash dash states, you can do stuff like that. But what I mean to say is that um, if you do not want to get updates for any change, but you are only want, uh, but you only want updates for let's say Haryana or Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu or let's say Maharashtra. So if you are particularly interested in receiving updates for some states, so you can pass dash dash states flag and a comma separated list of the states that you're interested in. And the script will only notify you on Slack if the data for those states changes. So what I'm doing over here is nothing fancy, parsing the interested states for you. And if you do not pass it, uh, pass this flag, it will assume you're interested in all states. And then um, what I'm trying to do is, of course, I'm running in a try catch block. I am trying to parse the in, uh, like main URL of Ministry of um, Family, Welfare and Health. I'm trying to parse the table. I'm trying to extract all rows using beautiful soup. And um, for every row, now, as you can see in line 49, I am trying to extract the statistics of every row. So for example, um, every row will belong to a state and its statistics, okay? So that's what's happening over there. And the last row, which is for um, overall India, it's having just five columns instead of six, so I'm handling that. And for the rest of the states which have six columns, I am checking whether uh, the state belongs to the interested states that you have passed as a flag parameter. 
so if some state is interested is interested for you like if not state is interested but if you are interested in some state um, the statistics of that state are being pushed to this stats array which will contain the final data and what I am doing is I'm loading the past data and the current data is being built as a dictionary of state and every state is having the current time at which the script is running followed by the statistics and then what I'm doing is basically changed is a flag which is set to false and then I'm comparing like for the state in current data if state is not in past data it means new state has emerged as you can see in line 65 and this is an important event that we can notify to our users right so I'm building an info array and this is an important event so I'm appending that to that array talking about that this new state got coronavirus and maybe you're interested in having a summary kind of thing so once I do that um, like if the state is not in past data it means it's a new state otherwise I simply compare whether the past data and current data are same so if they are not same which means something has changed and again this is an important event which you can notify to your user so I'm again appending that to the info array and then um, what I'm doing is if something has changed what I do is for state in current data um, I'm overriding what we have stored in database so what I'm trying to do is I'm updating the latest key with the current data as well as the current time and I'm saving that to the DB and then once you have done that all you have to do is use tabulate to format your table into a structure which slack understands or you can beautifully display that table as we could see initially in the slack message and then I generate my slack text okay so once I do that um, I finally use my slacker class which allows me to send the slack directly to my slack channel and again now we are running everything in a try catch block so if some exception occurs we are locking that as well as we are throwing that to slack so that we get notified that something has failed and we can fix it and that's how I actually fixed a few things in the script and uh, I would really encourage you to go and check out the source code on github and I hope you enjoyed this video I think it would be a fun exercise and you can do lots of different things just by understanding how to basically use Python beautiful soup to scrape the data out and then use a slack client to receive notifications I'm sure with this few skills in mind once you have learned them you can do a lot of different things and I would be happy to know in comments what you think about this video and um, let me know if you have any other ideas of course you will be brimming with a lot of ideas if you're learning this for the first time and i will see you in the next one guys till then please take care please work from home please maintain social distance and take care all right guys please subscribe if you like this video and i'll see you in the next one till then you can watch the other videos shown here